Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is uh, Tuesday, May the 23rd, and such a beautiful day here in Beaver Dam. And I'm glad to see that Karen's up and joining us this morning. Well, good morning, Karen. So uh, this is our time where we get together uh, Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then to uh, hear some writings from uh, John Wesley as we work through our uh, daily devotion book that we have. Well, good morning, Martha. Good morning, Dick and Nancy. Glad to see you guys are joining us as well. So uh, if you are joining us live, uh, drop us a line like uh, several folks have this morning. Let us know that you're there. It's also a great place to uh, bring your prayer concerns and your praises as well. It's a great way for us to stay connected. So uh, let's go ahead and delve into our text today. Our text this morning, our scripture this morning, comes from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. So uh, let's see what, uh, what we have today. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Faith is reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. Elders in the past were proved because they showed faith. By faith, we understand that the universe has been created by a word from God, so that the visible came into existence from the invisible. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice to God than Cain, which showed that he was righteous, since God gave approval to him for his gift Though he died, he's still speaking through faith. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he didn't see death and that he wasn't found because God took him up. He was given approval for having pleased God before he was taken up. It's impossible to please God without faith because one who draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards people who try to find him. So uh, such good words this morning. Well, good morning, Mom. I'm glad to see you're joining us. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, come to the Lord in prayer this morning. And our focus verse this morning is verse 6. And uh, like we've done uh, a bunch of times, we'll read it from different uh, translations and see how the different translations speak to you. So let's still our hearts and come before God in prayer this morning. A couple of nice deep breaths to still our souls. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6 from the King James Version. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. From the New Revised Standard Version. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whoever would approach God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him.
from the Common English Bible. It's impossible to please God without faith because the one who draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards people who try to find him. From the New Living Translation. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And from the message, it's impossible to please God apart from faith. And why? Because anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and that he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. Amen. Amen. Now, I, uh, I think I really like the message translation this morning of, of this particular verse, especially um, the part that anyone who, who wants to approach God must believe that he exists and that he cares enough to respond. I like that a lot for some reason. It speaks to me. So uh, anyway, we are using our Renew My Heart daily devotion, and the one for today is entitled Faith, the Ground of It All, and it is based on our focus verse this morning. We may separately consider faith as being implied in what it means to be an altogether Christian. Yet faith cannot actually be separated from the love of God and of our neighbor. It is rather the ground of both. Very ex excellent things are spoken of faith in the word of God. Everyone who believes is born of God. As many as, many as receive him, to them he gives he gave the right to become children of God, even those who believe in his name. And this victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Our Lord himself declared that one who believes in the Son has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. But let none deceive his or her own soul. The faith which does not result in penance, repentance, love, and all good works is not the, that true living faith, but a dead devilish one. Even the devils believe in the Old and New Testaments. They believe that Christ was born of a virgin, that he worked miracles and declared himself very God. They believe that he suffered death to redeem us from everlasting death, that he rose again, is at the right hand of the Father, and will judge the living and the dead at the end of the world. Yet they are devils still in, and remain in their damnable estate, lacking the true Christian faith. We must have a living faith. Wow. 
some uh, some good words from Wesley this morning on on that topic for sure. So I thought I'd also would share with you this morning um, uh, one of the Wesleyan core terms that is found in my uh, my Common English Study Bible, and it's entitled faith, and it, it has to do with chapter eleven. Because if you if you went back and you read the rest of chapter eleven, um, the writer gives you lots of examples of um, Old Testament figures and the faith that they had, and it's well worth going back and reading all about Noah and Abraham and Sarah and uh, and Jacob and Joseph and all of those all of those uh, historical biblical characters. So let's uh, let's see what we have here on the, our Wesleyan core term on faith. Faith was one of the most important theological concepts for John Wesley, as well as one of the most complex. Over time, Wesley came to think of faith in different ways, all of which are important. He first thought of of it primarily as believing the truth of Christian revelation. He never gave up that idea, but through his own experience of grace of God, his own experience of the grace of God, he realized that faith also involves trust and confidence. In fact, having this trust in God became so important that eventually he began to consider faith as evidence of God's love that, secure, that could secure our trust and confidence. Because faith can have different dimensions, Wesley began to talk of degrees of faith to indicate how people could grow in the way they grasp the meaning of God's love for them. The highest degree of faith was coupled with such assurance of God's love that a person was completely filled with love in return. And I think uh, I think we would call that uh, that striving for perfection. But I also think what what Wesley was getting at, and the the reading this morning was getting at, was this connection between our faith and the that it is grounded in love. And that one of the ways that we show that love, that we show that complete love that God has for us, is by loving our neighbor. And I think that's uh, that's important that we that we maintain those connections. That just because we believe, if we're not demonstrating that belief, then uh, we're not doing everything that we need to be doing. And I think that's uh, I think that's what Wesley was getting at. I think that's what Wesley was was also um, thinking about when he talked about his degrees of love, that the closer we come to God, the closer that we have faith, uh, the more that um, the more complete that will be. So Sarah raises a question. So people who have faith chosen by God for heaven. So people who have faith chosen by God for heaven. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's one way to put it. Um, yeah, because it's through our faith that we, we do secure a place in heaven and, uh, and it, it is God moving first. So God would be, would be choosing us and God chooses all of us, which is a, a good, a good and glorious thing. So, well, those are kind of my thoughts on uh, the topic for today. Um, if you have any additional comments, drop them there in the comment box and we can keep, uh, keep the conversation going. But for now, uh, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer to get ready to take on this day. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the beautiful sun shining this morning and the cool temperatures. And God, we just really thank you for, for you being who you are, you being our Lord, our Master, and our Savior. And God, we just, we thank you continually for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us. 
Lord, we know that there are people out there who are suffering today. They're grieving the loss of, of loved ones. They're suffering with, uh, with physical challenges. And uh, they're just suffering with all of the things that life throws at them. Lord, help us see those people who are in need and guide us to helping them as much as we can and where we can. And Lord, we know that when we do this, this is one of the ways that we show how much we do love you. And it's a demonstration of the love that you have for us. So God, we ask that you continue to guide us and inspire us to walking closer with you and by walking closer with you by to love our neighbor as well so lord we just we thank you and uh, we raise this prayer to you in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen well friends remember that this is a day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it go in peace y'all bye for now